Hello everyone, this is Andres Almirai from J Nation 2024 and with me I have Andrea Perrufo uh, from Italy, I think. I'm from uh, actually Portugal. I live in Lisbon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even so, if I'm Italian. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, so Portugal is no stranger to you, uh, but is it your first time at J Nation? No, I actually have been here almost every year since it started. I think I missed one edition, but this is this conference is uh, simply rocking. <laughs> It's, it's a great event, right? So you can really feel the, uh, the community vibe, how it is easy to approach people and uh, just learn from the speakers and get all that content in and also speak with the, uh, with the sponsors that we have here. Yeah, it's great. Uh, also, being it in Coimbra is right in the middle of Portugal. So people from the entire nation is coming here to gather uh, for, for this event. And this is amazing. Uh, it's not located in a big city, so it doesn't attract just half of the people because Lisbon and Porto are quite far away from each other. And it just attra attracts the entire community. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. So I know, I and mean, based on your T-shirt, that you like to talk about WASM, and that that's the topic of the workshop that you have tomorrow. So what can you tell us about not WASM, but also the workshop that you're going to present tomorrow? So tomorrow I'm going to trick people, uh, in the sense that WASM is, uh, is kind of an excuse to speak about uh, real compilers and interpreters and how you build them. So it's a really technical deep dive into building an interpreter. And uh, I, I, will, uh, I will be asking people to actually re-implement part of the interpreter I'm working on, which is called the Chikori, and is a WASM runtime in pure Java. I was about to ask you about that. So I know that you've been working with this project called Chicory, which is a full implementation of Wasmore Interpreter in Java. I think it's, it's not the first approach, but I think it's the one that has been uh, much ahead of time uh, as, as the others, if I'm not mistaken. So you and your team are able to finally build something that is 100% Java that you can use to consume Wasm uh, executables, modules. library modules. Uh, so how what's the experience there as someone has worked on the project but also what uh, as a consumer I, if i were to consume chicory what would be the uh, the expectations here yeah so wasm is a technology uh, which we are not talking much about in the java in the java world and this is sad because everyone else in the world is uh, trying to apply it and plug into their application so uh Every application out there, if you speak about Envoy, Red Panda, and many other applications are allowing for dynamic plugins systems uh, based on WASM runtimes that they are integrating depending on the host language they use. So if they use Rust, it might be WASM time. If it is Go, they use WASIR, which are uh, like the de facto standard implementation for, uh, for the specific language. At the same time, uh, building it is an incredible adventure because right now we started with a pure interpreter, which has a lot of trade-offs, as you might imagine. So. Uh, the code is actually executing just plain Java code, uh, which means that you can actually uh, build your, uh, um, your module into, uh, and run your module when it is built with GraalVM, a nat native image, and without, with zero configuration, because it doesn't rely on reflection in any, in any way, so you can directly run it on any JVM and uh, as well on native image. At the same time, we started already working on an OT compiler for compiling ahead of time uh, WASM modules into bytecode, and uh, hopefully this is going to be very fast. Okay, so we're talking about that WASM is its own assembly. Uh, it has an own assembly definition. Yes. But at some point, you will expect to map that assembly definition into Java bytecode, which is, in its own way, it's also its own assembly definition, which is a specific to the JVM, to the uh, yeah, the JVM is not just a Java language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, the Java Java bytecode and the WebAssembly can can be relatable. There there are difference of, uh, differences, of course. Wasm, for example, has a uh, structured control flow, which means that there are just nested blocks. Instead of in Java, you can do direct jumps, for example, and you but you can easily adapt in between one uh, one one to the other. So we do expect to be able to uh, to write an IoT compiler, which is really performant at the end of the day. And 
And so what about the latest uh, advancements of Java? Java 21 gave us uh, uh, a new option to reach into native code with FFI. Uh, is that is that kind of something that can help you when you want to connect the external world from a Wasm model into the VM? Thanks for your question. This, uh, this is actually really amazing because uh, Panama and Java 21 are enabling you to call into native code much more easily than, uh, than before and much more conveniently, and it's amazing. But at the same time, WebAssembly has a completely different take on, on FFI. So you won't be uh, getting outside of the JVM. So you will be running directly bytecode and not escaping the JVM as a number of advantages for people integrating it in their technology. This means that uh, if something crashes, the JVM won't crash <laughs> outside of application. Uh, memory, memory control, you can directly uh, define the number of exact bytes that your plugin will be using in the WebAssembly runtime, but you cannot really control very precisely the memory consumed by an external process or an external library. Uh, and uh, uh, the observability, <laughs> the just-in-time compilation. You have all the benefit of the JVM without escaping it, and at the same time you have the possibility of running a C, Rust, and uh, other programs. Okay, so... Uh... Forgive me if I say something wrong here, but this sounds amazing because in such a way, to me, this description is like you're able to compile an external module with any other host language, whichever it may be, which is non-Java, and then you get something, some executable, some binary, this WASM uh, bytecode, if you will, this assembly, that will run natively in the VM because you're doing the translation from one assembly into the next one, which is the bytecode, and you still get the benefits of running within the VM. You're not escaping outside of the box. That, that sounds like you are able, you will be able, once this is done correctly and properly and you have all the connections, you will be able to write code in any language you feel like and still have running that inside the VM with all the benefits that the JVM provides. Yes, so WebAssembly has been defined to, to, to be extremely safe in its design and uh, sandboxed. So uh, what you described, described precisely what WebAssembly has been, de uh, has, has been invented for. Uh, at the same time, it, uh, it adds additional security layers and, uh, and, addi and additional uh, properties to running native code on top of the JVM, which means, for example, uh, that the execution of WAS modules is completely sandboxed. So so um, by itself, the engine, uh, the WASM, is just a nice calculator. It cannot do nothing. It, can, it cannot affect the external world. So you, can, you can't even write to standard out. Uh, you have to explicitly allow your modules to access the, for example, standard out tracers. So you have the most fine-grained control over what your WASP plugins uh, will be able to do within your application. And this obviously increases the safety and what you can do with it. Okay, so connecting to resources is important in this case because of the sandbox nature. I'm aware that the project crack has uh, proposed a, a few changes in API so that you can a re uh, kind of like a snooze when, when the VM goes down that you want to save or record something and when it goes back you can reconnect resources. This, is, this kind of API will, could also possibly work for you for, for Wasm and Chicory? I haven't thought much about Crack uh, but if you can snapshot the current situation of the JVM, yes for sure. Uh, I mean, uh, you have uh, with Cracker you have the common problems of reopening, for example, open file uh, and etc. But it will be the very same situation as you have in Java, in pure Java as of today. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much for uh, spending time with us, uh, Andrea, and thank you everyone else for watching. And we'll see you next.